Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My dad left my mom and me for someone else on my 18th birthday. Now he wants to come back, begging for forgiveness. My 18th birthday was supposed to be a happy occasion. I couldn't believe what was happening. My dad, the person who was supposed to be the one who loved my mom and me unconditionally, had just announced on my 18th birthday that he was divorcing my mom and marrying someone else. I was speechless. My mom, on the other hand, was in tears asking how he could do this to us. We were in shock for days, barely talking to each other. I couldn't focus on anything, and my grades started slipping. My mom was struggling to make ends meet, as she had been a stay-at-home mom for years and didn't have any job experience. She was also heartbroken, trying to cope with the fact that the person she thought she would spend the rest of her life with had betrayed her. As for my dad, he was living it up with his new girlfriend. He posted pictures on social media of them traveling the world and having fun, as if our family had never existed. I was so angry and hurt that he could just walk away from us like that. How could he be so selfish? Three months went by and I was starting to accept that he was gone for good. It had only been a few months since my dad had announced his divorce and plans to remarry, and we were all still trying to adjust to the new reality. We hadn't heard from my dad since he left. My mom was finally starting to get back on her feet with the help of her best friend Jane, who had been a pillar of support during this difficult time. But then, suddenly, out of nowhere, my dad came back, crawling on his knees, begging for us to be a family again. He looked so pathetic, so weak, that I almost felt sorry for him. But then I remembered how he had hurt my mom, how he had shattered our family, and my anger came rushing back. He begged for our forgiveness and promised that he had made a mistake, that he had only been trying to find to find himself, and had realized that his family was what was truly needed. I was torn. On one hand, I had missed my dad terribly and wanted nothing more than to have him back in our lives. But on the other hand, I couldn't help but feel angry and resentful towards him for causing so much pain and chaos in our lives. My mom was furious. She had finally started to move on, to heal, and here he was throwing everything back into chaos again. But my dad was insistent, telling us how sorry he was, how much he loved us, how he had made a mistake. He promised that he would never leave us again, that he would be there for us always. My mom was just starting to get on her feet with the help of her friends and family. She had found a new job and was making plans for our future, and now my dad was asking us to forget everything that had happened and start over. I turned to face my mother and I could see tears streaming down her face. My father was standing in front of us looking pale and remorseful but my mother's eyes were filled with rage and hurt. A deep breath escaped her lips and then she screamed at him, how dare you come back here? After everything that has happened, you were expecting us to forgive you just like that. Our family was torn apart, my heart was broken, and you left us to pick up the pieces while you ran off to start a new life with someone else. My father tried to speak, but my mother didn't let him. I don't want to hear it, she yelled. You need to leave and never come back. You are dead to us. The door slammed shut and I could hear my father's sobs on the other side. My heart ached for him, but I knew that he had brought this upon himself. My mother turned to me, her arms wrapping around me as we both cried. Her voice was trembling with anger and grief as she spoke. He doesn't deserve us. We'll be okay without him. We'll be strong together. I nodded in agreement, but inside I felt a deep sadness that our family would never be the same again. As days turned into weeks, my father continued to show up at our house begging for forgiveness and another chance, but my mother and I remained resolute in our decision to keep him out of our lives. Each time he showed up, my mother would send him away with a few choice words and a slam door. I could see the pain in her eyes and I knew that she was struggling to keep it together. As for me, I didn't hold back. One day when my father showed up unannounced, I lost my temper. What do you want from us? Can't you see that you've ruined everything? I yelled at him, my voice shaking with anger. My father looked at me with tears in his eyes. I just want my family back, he said softly. Well, you can't have us back, I spat. You made your choice when you left us for someone else. You don't get to come crawling back and expect us to just forgive you. My father hung his head and I could see the shame written all over his face, but I didn't feel sorry for him. He had hurt us too much and I couldn't just let him back into our lives like nothing had happened. Update 1. Six months had passed since the day my father crawled back into our lives begging for forgiveness. My mother and I had both made it clear that we wanted nothing to do with him and we had been ignoring him ever since. However, that didn't stop him from showing up at our doorstep unannounced and unwanted. One day, my mother surprised me by telling me that she had started dating again. Her best friend had introduced her to a wonderful man and she seemed happy for the first time in months. I was overjoyed for her and supported her decision to move on from my father. But just as my mother was starting to move on, my father began to show up at our house more frequently. He would wait outside for hours hoping to catch a glimpse of us, and he would leave gifts and notes at our doorstep. My mother tried to ignore him, but it was clear that he wasn't going to give up that easily. And one day as we pulled up to the driveway, my mother and her date stepped out of the car. Just as they were about to say goodbye, my father appeared out of nowhere. What the hell is going on here? She demanded, his eyes darting between my mother and her date. I was caught off guard by my father's sudden appearance, and my mother's date quickly stepped forward, putting himself between Huayd, Sabiatin sobbed in my mother and my father, and I could feel the tension in the air as my father and mother's date faced off. Who are you? And my mother's date asked, his voice firm. I'm her husband. 
My father spat out, his face twisted in anger. Not anymore, my mother replied, standing tall beside her date. I moved on just like you did. I could see the hurt in my father's eyes as my mother's words hit home. He looked like he was about to argue, but my mother's date spoke up before he could say anything. So you heard her, he said firmly, his tone leaving no room for argument. It's time for you to leave. He, my father looked like he was about to say something, but something in my mother's date's expression made him think twice. He nodded, casting a long look at my mother before turning and walking away. I could see the relief on my mother's face as we all stood there, in silence, the tension slowly dissipating. When my mother's date turned to us, a small smile on his face. Are you both okay? He asked, concern etched on his features. My mother nodded, a grateful smile on her face. She thanked him for being here. As we made our way into the house, I couldn't help but feel proud of my mother. She had come so far in just a few short months, and I knew that she would continue to thrive with or without my father. Senta, I cannot believe the nerve of that man. He destroyed his family, and now he wants to come back and act like nothing happened. But it's so selfish and insensitive. He left his wife and daughter to pick up the pieces and start over, and now he thinks he can just waltz back in and demand forgiveness. It's despicable, and to add insult to injury, he's using the excuse of wanting to find himself. What kind of excuse is that? He had a family that loved him, and he threw it all away. It's time for him to take responsibility for his actions and stop making excuses. I have so much respect for that woman. She went through such a difficult time and came out stronger on the other side. She didn't let her husband's betrayal define her, but instead she took control of her life and moved on. She's an inspiration to us all. It takes a lot of courage to leave a toxic relationship and start over, but she did it with grace and determination. She deserves all the happiness in the world, and I'm so glad to see her thriving. OP went through such a traumatic experience, but she didn't let it break her. She stood by her mother's side and supported her through it all. She showed such strength and resilience. It's not easy to witness your family falling apart, but she handled it with maturity beyond her years. And when her father tried to come back and disrupt their lives again, she didn't let him. She stood her ground and protected her family. Next story. I, 45, am a single mom. I do not have a lot of rules, but I expect the few I have to follow because they are for both safety and common courtesy. My 18 male oldest child has always had difficulty following rules. He's also extremely irresponsible and does not seem to understand how his actions affect others. Lately, when he does something wrong, he gets irrationally angry about it or tries to rationalize it. Any common, even constructive, criticism is met with aggressive anger and name calling. By his own admission, he has anger issues. He's working on them and he sees a therapist regularly. He even blows up at himself when he's alone in his room if he spills a drink or stubs his toe. It's completely over the top. Now that he's legally an adult, if we have a disagreement, he will immediately start yelling, name-calling, and say that he's an adult and I can't tell him what to do. He's made some poor decisions that have negatively impacted our family and does not seem to understand the consequences at all. If this was any other relationship and not my child, I would have ended it long ago. I'm sick of his blow-ups and being called names in my own home, and I'm sick of him doing whatever he wants with no regard to his actions affecting others. It causes a lot of unneeded stress. Tonight, I hit my breaking point. He went out and when he came home, he did not lock the door or even check to make sure it was latched. I heard him come in and called out to lock the door because I was in the back of the house at the time. He ignored me. The door was left wide open and one of our cats got out and is now missing. This is not the first time he's failed to close or lock a door. I've woken up in the last year to discover my front door wide open in the middle of the night. Then we both both times our pets were secured in other rooms and did not get out, and thankfully no one came in. Due to his anger issues and the fact that he can't be trusted to do basic but important things like close the door, I no longer feel safe with him here. I called his father tonight in tears, and he immediately came over and helped look for our cat. I'm heartbroken our cat is still missing and worried about how my other children will react when we tell them, and I am so angry that it all could have been prevented. So Ata, edited for information. To all of you who've reached out with concern for my son and the cat, thank you for all the advice. Info. I was diagnosed as an adult with ADHD. It is suspected I had suspicions during the COVID shutdown and online learning, but he has it as well. He has not been formally diagnosed due to personal interests, possible careers, due to stigma associated with it, meaning he would be unable to pursue a career in either of his chosen fields with an ADHD diagnosis. His doctor therapist are both aware and he's been working through it in therapy, coping skills, anger management, triggers, etc. I thought we were doing the right thing to protect his future, but now I'm afraid it isn't the best decision. I will reach out to his therapist for advice and for those who are using this quote against me. If this was any other relationship and not my child, I would have ended it long ago. I stand by it. As the victim of domestic abuse, I was encouraged to leave the relationship, not my co-parent. We do not want to perpetuate it. Verbal abuse is still abuse. If it were my husband, folks would suggest I leave and break the cycle. But since it is an adult son, I'm a bad mom because I don't want to take it. No, but I can continue to work with my co-parent and address the issue in therapy, which I am doing.
I love my son, but that does not mean I should enable him to keep making the same choices and sticking others, his family, me, with the consequences of his actions. Eat it. I would also like to point out that my son's doctor and therapist, as well as his school, have been aware of my suspicions concerning ADHD and heredity. It's not like his condition was ignored in terms of health, mental health, or education. During COVID shutdown, our education system as a whole had an extremely difficult time educating due to online learning and restrictions. During his junior year, my son took responsibility for his learning and made sure he was on track for graduation this year. All comments from an education standpoint have been positive. My concern is regarding the anger attitude that manifested in the last year and during after his first real relationship, which in hindsight appears to be related to ADHD, particularly how it affects relationships and understanding, expressing his feelings in a healthy way, as well as showing empathy. So those of you who are suggesting this is an ongoing issue that has been ignored and dates back to his childhood or making assumptions that are wrong. Don't forget that I was diagnosed as an adult and I'm still figuring out how these things affect me, not to mention how it affects my adult child, Denta. He needs to do a lot more work on himself and just because it was a mistake doesn't lessen the consequences of it. Imagine if the door hadn't been found and it was left open half the night. That's a massive security issue an 18-year-old should be able to understand. As he said to you, he's an adult, and since he's an adult, you're no longer obligated to have him under your roof. You're treating him as an adult based on his behavior. Has he been diagnosed to explain this disassociation he's demonstrating? Denta. People forget that children can also be perpetrators of abuse against their parents. You deserve to feel safe in your own home and your children deserve to feel safe. It's not like you sent him out on the street. He's staying with his dad. I would just make sure that you tell him you love him a lot and always will but that you feel it is the best interest of everyone that he stays with his dad at the moment. Next story. I'm in my sophomore year of college and live in a four-person suite. Two people per room with a bathroom and living room. I share a room with Liv, and then in the other room are Mads and Chris. Liv told us that she wanted us to be a diet-free zone because she doesn't want to be inundated with diet messagings for New Year's. Off. I don't mind avoiding the subject around her, but she wanted to stop us from doing stuff like meal prep or counting calories because it's all diet culture. I have a food scale because I'm shit at portion sizes, and she wanted me to put it up. I gained some weight over the last semester due to laziness and snacking, and I need to get myself back into shape, and I don't want to feel like I'm sick or something wrong, trying to love myself in my wire. We mads is with me, so the two of us decided to propose that we just have live switch rooms. The live got really upset and said that she was really hurt that I would choose diet culture over living with her. I said that I don't want to hurt her, but that me getting back into shape is important, and I also think having me and Mads supporting each other will make it easier for us to stay on track. Chris was in support of just changing rooms and that she's okay with keeping it all out of the communal spaces. Liv made a really big deal and has been excessively posting on TikTok and Instagram stuff like your fat friends don't need to hear about how you're afraid of looking like them and all that, which I'm kind of offended that she's trying to make my thoughts feelings about my body somehow about her. She doesn't usually show narcissistic tendencies, but it's really weird to me because it's like when people are like, oh, you think you're fat. Well, what does that make me then? And it's like, chill sis, none of us were talking about you. Anyway, Mads posted on here once about some family drama, so she said I should see what you all think. T, you're not trying to control or shame her about her body or diet. You are trying to work on yourself. Liv is the one trying to control and shame you about your body and diet. You're doing nothing wrong. You are in fact making sure that Liv can have even more room to be herself by changing rooms. She said it was a problem to watch you count calories and diet so you are working with the situation you're in to make everyone as comfortable as possible. It sounds more like Liv wants you to conform to her standards which doesn't work because it's not the live show. To I get where she's coming from because diet culture is terrible. However, trying to guilt your friends into the idea is not the way to get support. Plus, there's a difference between diet culture and using healthy portioning and meal prep. I don't know about using a scale though. Next story, I'm a 46-year-old woman, and my fiancé Ben is 46 as well. His ex-wife, who is 48, is upset because I've chosen not to include her in my life. I understand that since there are children involved, co-parenting is necessary, and it's important for us to communicate for the well-being of the kids. However, given her behavior and actions, I've decided it's best to keep her out of our lives as much as possible. Instead, I've let Ben handle all the communication with her regarding the kids. He talks to her and then he relays any necessary information to me without me directly getting involved. Despite this arrangement, she seems to be having a meltdown because I won't engage with her or include her in our lives. I'm starting to question whether this decision was the right one. My argument being you guys are the parents, so what you guys decide is between the two of you. I've distanced myself from my own sanity because once her ex and I got together, she turned into the jealous ex-wife, despite being the one who cheated on him with his best friend and leaving Ben for him. She also had a kid with a friend which she passed off as Ben's until the divorce. Once she discovered that Ben moved on, she started blowing up his phone with furious texts about how I, I can't hold a candle to her, and it's not love, 
It's rebound, as well as telling him that they both know it's her he wants to be with. He showed me the texts. New Year's Eve, their kids spent a few days at my place for the first time. She had plans, as did we. She asked Ben to take the kids, and he explained he would be with me. She had no problems dropping them off, so she could go away for three days. This will come into play in a minute. The end of January, Ben and I moved in together. He with me as I had the bigger place. She exploded again over our relationship. Valentine's Day night, she blew his phone up with nudes of herself and messages of, you know you wish it were me with you right now. So as furious as I was, I understood that any reaction from me could be used against him during the custody battle. And it was best I do and say nothing. She was digging her own hole and digging it deeping. Then she changed tactics. She sent me a friend request on Facebook. Saw I, I saw it, and it baffled me. I checked my messenger expecting to see a message of her saying that I'm in her kids' lives and we should keep in touch about matters involving them, but there wasn't anything. If roles were reversed, I would have included a message of intent, and I understand that not everyone is me, but still, this seemed off. I left the request for a few days and thought it over. Yes, we should have communication between us for the sake of the kids, but Facebook didn't seem like the place for that. Most of my page was public, but personal things I selected family and friends only, and I didn't want her to have access to that. After thinking it over, I deleted her request. Not even an hour later, she's calling Ben and screaming that I refuse to friend her on Facebook and that he needs to make me accept her. Quote words. You need to make her. When I calmed down, I told him, I don't want her as a Facebook friend. We don't know each other like that, and I'm not comfortable having her there, and I'm not going to have to guard myself because she'll be able to see everything. I'm not friending her. She didn't even explain why she wanted to be friends. Just dropped a request and that was it. If she wants to discuss the kids, she can call, text, or meet me. Ben relayed this to her and my answer only seemed to infuriate her more. She started saying that she needs access to my Facebook so she can see the kind of person her children are spending time with. She didn't care who I was on New Year's when she dropped the kids off my place for three days and took off to party. And it's not like there's no way she can communicate with me about the kids. She can call. She can text. I went on about how laughable it is that she's worried about the kind of person I am when she's the one who dropped her kids off at a total stranger's house and never called to check them the whole time. They were over. How she goes on a personal attack on someone she doesn't even know. She sure has a lot to say about me considering we never spoke to each other. Going so far to keep telling her ex how much better she is than me. Sending nudes and having a meltdown because she can't stalk my page. Cheating on her husband with his best friend and having a kid and passing it off as his. I'm not the one pulling all this crap, nor would I. I went on to say that I think she's seen enough of the kind of person I am. Because I sure as hell have seen enough to know what a complete PO was she is, and I didn't even need to look at her Facebook page to find that out. Ben reluctantly agreed with me. He said I was right and he understood. But yes, there's a but here. But said it would make things a lot easier if I just accepted her friend request so he could stop fighting with her over it. So that pissed me off because I saw that as him still letting her have control over him. And I wasn't having it. As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing to fight over. The answer is no, and that's that. She just doesn't want to accept it. I refused to give in to the request and triple downed. I said that there is no need for her and I to ever speak. She's not a part of my life, nor will she be. And I changed my settings so that she couldn't see a damn thing. I figured she'd make a backup account and try snooping. I blocked her on every social media platform I have. She's currently still calling and texting that I'm hiding from her because I don't want her to see that I'm a danger to their kids. All because I shut her out. I don't think I'm being unreasonable. I don't think I need to give her full access to my life, and I believe that our life with the kids can be separate from her. What we do as a family is what we do. What she does when she has them is what she does. And I honestly think that giving in only opens the door to more issues. I really think I'm making the right choice here. Added, I'm going to add to my post here. Ben and her were married for over 20 years, together since they were teens. He's gone through 20 years of her lies, gaslighting, abuse, and manipulations. For him, it's easier to give in rather than fight, taking the path of least resistance. And giving in to her was easier than emotional and physical abuse. He went through a lot for the sake of his family and despite everything, tried his best to hold it together. It's patterned behavior which I'm trying to help him with. It's a process, and breaking the patterns isn't going to happen overnight. Everyone derives a worthy and healthy love, and taking on someone that's been through the emotional-physical ringer is going to come with its share of hiccups as he adjusts. This is an ongoing battle because of the kids. We're documenting everything. Recording calls, saving screenshots, etc. It's soul-crushing taking it and not giving it twice as hard back. However, as I stated, the cards are stacking more and more against her with each of her outbursts. Not doing anything is hopefully going to show the courts how unhinged she is. As long as we don't engage in it ourselves, it goes more in our favor. Keep in mind there are children involved and they are watching her go bonkers. Meanwhile, they're not seeing any craziness from Ben. Now, as I stated, Ben has years of her manipulating conditioning. And she is pretty good at trying to flip things around and make you look like you're the one who is the bad guy. He's still stuck on the inside looking out, where we're on the outside looking in, so we can see clearly the bigger picture. 
And this is where I am the of because I actually enjoy locking horns with her and showing her that her tactics don't work on me. And I get a little satisfaction in seeing her come apart at not getting her way. She's so used to having control over Ben. It's killing her that she's slowly losing that. I snatch the controller out of her hands and she's throwing a tantrum. Ben will get where he needs to be. One day at a time. Is he worth it? Yes. A faithful man that despite everything fought for his family, he went through hell and I feel like he deserves a healthy loving relationship. To me, this drama is all temporary. Just one bad chapter in our book. Eventually she will exhaust herself and she will either lose legally or the kids hit that age, which is soon, where co-parenting isn't necessary anymore. Ben's figuring it out. He's got a long road of healing and I'd rather support him over abandoning him. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.